um, today, I just want to say thank you for everything. I have the honor of having uh, Chris Knowles as my pastor, my husband, the father of my children. And he is excellent at all jobs. He is, so, he is such a sincere person. I think that's what I can say about him. He's sincere. And, uh, you know, when uh, we got married over 20 years ago, we just celebrated our 20th anniversary in August, uh, he, you know, there are a lot of things I said I wasn't going to do. And uh, he picked up the slack, okay? He's raised six kids because he, he was one of those who got up in the middle of the night, changed diapers, fed, fed babies. He goes to work every day. And he doesn't take off work, you know, just for any reason. I know people who say, oh, I feel like I'm going to get a headache. And I, I know if I work where he worked, I'd have a lot of off days. But, <laughs> but he, doesn't, he doesn't do that. I mean, he's um, raised, you know, we have two kids in college now. And, you know, most of that is due to him. I mean, he would take six kids, I mean, five kids to the shop uh, to shop for groceries. And me, I was like, uh-uh, no, mm, no, I can't do that. But, you know, I can remember when we lived in Oklahoma, he would take four kids to, to church, and I would take the baby to work with me to round in the hospital. So he's, he's just a sincere person. He's a hard-working person. And uh, it's just a pleasure to be here at Truvine because, you know, people sometimes find that, you know, think that there are limits and uh, things that are not good about being in small congregations. But what we find is that you're able to know everybody. Okay, so there's not somebody who doesn't know the pastor. And so those are the type of things you look at. There's nobody who doesn't know me. And so there's not, you know, you know you're not one of those people in the church, and so the pastor doesn't really know you. So that doesn't happen here. And so that's an advantage to me for us and for you guys, I think. And so we just want to thank you for allowing us to be here for 14 years. I want to thank him for, for being my pastor for 14 years, my husband for 20. So maybe we'll have another 20 years. You know, maybe we'll have another 14 years. I don't know. We'll just have to see how those go. And uh, I just want to say thank you again. You know, I see all my friends out here, my sorority sisters who are here. Some of us decided to dress in red and others did not. <laughs> Always. <laughs> but <laughs> I just want to say thank you very much. And uh, we just appreciate everything you guys do for us. And everything you do is unexpected. It's, it's not something that you have to do. Okay, so thank you for everything. And you always, you, know, you treat us so beautifully. That's all I can say. You really do. Thank you. I'd like to thank the leadership and the membership of this church for your faithfulness to God, your faithfulness to this body of believers. I'd like to thank you for your encouragement, your support, and your patience with me as your leader. I'd like to thank you for everything that you've done for all the things that you've said, for overlooking my shortcomings and praying for me during the 14 years that I've served as your pastor. And I pray that God will continue to grow us and strengthen us and keep us in his service, that we can be better than what we've been, be better than what we are, and be better at doing what God would want us to do. I'd like to thank you and pray for leadership, pray for vision, pray for the future of our church. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Niles. Next. Now we're down to our introduction to the speaker, our Reverend Carl George. Reverend Carl George was born in Mount Pleasant, Texas, uh, to Reverend Lou, Louis B. George and uh, 
Mrs. Uh, Albertine George. He was raised in Texarkana, Texas, and uh, accepted Christ at his uh, personal savior at Oak Street Baptist Church in Texarkana, Texas. In 1986, he graduated from the University of Texas at Tyler with a bachelor's degree and administration degree. Uh, his education background has led him to a broad range of experiences in business field as a manager, financial advisor, and uh, entrepreneur. On March 17, 1996, he surrendered to the call of ministry and continues to uplift uh, George, the George legacy set by his brothers, his father, his grandfather, and several uncles who were also in ministry, who were also ministers. Reverend George has served as an associate minister at New uh, Generation Baptist Church at the North Star Baptist Church, both in Tyler, Texas. He has served as pastor of Powell Chapel Baptist Church in Winona, Texas, uh, Lifeline Baptist Church in Tyler, um, and Pilgrim's, Pilgrim's Rest Baptist Church in Palestine, Texas. He has a vision to bring all aspects of life into uh, Christian's uh, arena and uh, a burden to uh, preach the Word of God across racial, cultural, and uh, generational lines. Reverend George, Reverend Cord George, is also married to Mrs. Uh, Laquita George. They have two children, a son, uh, Kristen Lee, and a daughter, Chelsea Lynn. Thank you, thank you, and welcome. Oh, I'm the 
continue to run for Jesus. Even if I have to run alone, because it's my determination to make God's beautiful ever my home. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Oh, I can make it by myself. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Oh, sometimes when burdens stress me, I said, hold me. Jesus, hold me, hold me, Lord, hold me, Jesus, hold me, please hold me, Lord, Lord, I need you to hold me, in the middle of the night, Jesus, I need you to stop, my Lord, when I'm dragging tears for water, Lord, I need you to stop, my Lord, when family don't walk away from me, Lord, I need you to hold me, when friends don't turn their back on me, Lord, I need you to hold me. Please hold me, Lord. Lord, I need you to hold me. Lord, if you don't hold me, I will surely fall, Lord. I need you to guide my step, Lord. Please hold me, Lord. I need you to hold me. Hold me in the morning, Lord. Lord, in the noonday. Lord, right now, Lord, I need you to hold me. Oh, hold me, Lord. Please hold me. I need you to hold me, Lord. Need you to hold my hand. Let's give this first family a hand. First, let's also give these kids See, I don't know if you understand this, but it's hard being a PK. See, you get pressure from the inside and the outside. Because people on the outside look at you and say, well, you know, you're a doctor's kid, so you ought to act like. And you don't even get any rest when you go to school because you know your daddy's over there, he's a principal, and, and you got to act like this. And you can't even rest when you kind of, you know, try to do what you're trying to do because somebody say, you know, your dad's a preacher, so you, you know you ought to act like. So give these kids a hand. Also, see, you have Sister Nars a hand. Give her a hand. <laughs> see, I don't know if y'all understand this, but it was hard being, let me just put this down, because it's hard. Well, no, that was better. <laughs> it was a hard being a doctor in the middle of an epidemic. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Before the epidemic, some folks didn't even want to go to work. So after the epidemic, you didn't know who was affected and who was not affected. And yet she still had to go to work not knowing that her life could be on the line. Give her a hand for her service. But all what I like about her, she loves her husband. She takes good care of him. See, when he was down, I saw an aspect of love, of servitude. She came behind him, beside him. She grabbed him. She prayed with him. She held him. That's real love. See, see, love is, is not just what you tell somebody. Love is not that stuff you buy on Valentine's, you know, get that cheap rose and that, that easy, that, you know, that cheap chocolate. You know, the kind with the stuff inside, you know, those fake cherries. That, that we were talking about real, real love. It's when somebody goes through a storm and they're right next to them. Come on, Real love 
is being able to come together as a unified body in serving and working in a unified place, lifting up the name of God in good times and bad times. Real love is having the ability to stand when somebody else is willing to sit down. This couple has real love. Brother Nalls, thank you for thinking about me this day. See, we usually, we usually have to meet in unique places. You know, Walmart, Sam's, you know, the, the good spots. And, and we have to have these conversations. And every now and folks get in line behind us, and they tell us, you know, we need to keep moving. But the conversation gets so good, we just can't let it go. Y'all have a wonderful gift. Amen. See, nowadays, in 2023, you got a lot of folks that talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. You have a man of God that walks the walk. He loves his family, he loves his wife, and he loves his church. He's humble and dedicated. He's a true man of God. Let's give him a hand. I know y'all tell me to come on and preach. I know that's why I'm here. Let me go ahead and preach because I know there's some food right in the corner waiting for us. And I heard a stomach or two growling, so I'm going to go on with it. If you would turn to Jeremiah 33, chapter 10 and 11. Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 10 and 11. I also want to thank Brother Vernon for coming out and supporting. Thank you, Brother V. He'll tell me, I'll go if nobody else is going to go. And nowadays, when people are coming in at 11 o'clock, it's kind of hard to shut down one to come to another. But he says, I'm going. I don't care who goes. I got to go. I said, yes, sir, you're going. And I thank him for his dedication. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 10 and 11. And it says, this is what the Lord says. You say about this place, it is a desolate waste without people or animals. Yet in the towns of Judea and the streets of Jer Jerusalem that are deserted, inhabited by neither people nor animals, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the joys, the voices of bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring thank, thank offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. F his love endureth forever. For I will restore the fortunes of the lands as they were before, says the Lord. If you would turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. we're going to talk about a reason, a reason. To, praise. to praise. A reason, a reason. to praise. I thank you for allowing me to come to True Vine. It's one of the historical churches in the city. If you look around Tyler and the history of the city, True Vine has always been a place of the innovators, the educators, the leaders, and the visionaries. Those who are always upstanding in the community and those who always led the way. Again, we thank you for allowing us to be here. If you would, do you realize how blessed you really are? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Try this one more time. All right. Do you realize how blessed you really are? Yes. You have, in the last few years, you have come through a recession yes. where houses that used to cost two and three hundred thousand dollars went down to the forties and fifties. And you know what? And folks still couldn't buy them. It was a time when plants start showing that shutting down. You know, places like Kelly Springfield, places like Carrier, places like Tyler Pipe, where people made good livings. Uh, all of a sudden, those jobs were gone. You came through a recession. You also looked around and you came through an epidemic. It was a time when they said it was one of the deadliest viruses in the world. And what did they give us to protect ourselves? 
I don't know about you. When police go to, 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 to war, they got bulletproof vests. In the military, they got gas masks. They said, we are going to die, and this is the one thing that protects us. At a time when the government was giving churches money to shut down, people lost their faith. People lost their way. People who were afraid of an epidemic and said, I ain't going to that church because it may be the epidemic in there. They are buried around the corner because they believe more than the epidemic. They, be they believed in our good Lord and Savior. They believed more in something they couldn't see as opposed to something they should have known what was inside of them. Uh, you've come through an epidemic uh, and you've even come through a situation where we had some crazy president. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to talk about politics. And yet, in the midst of the recession, uh, in the midst of a time when even right now you got houses around the corner that a few years ago we wouldn't want to live in and getting hundreds of thousands of dollars for a place we didn't want. Yeah. Yeah. Milk has gotten so crazy that even babies don't even get to drink it. Eggs have gotten so bad. I heard somebody said he said to go get some chickens. It got so bad, even churches start shutting some of the doors. It's gotten so bad that everything's high, and yet you made it. Yeah. Turn around and tell somebody, in spite of all that's going on, you made it. In spite of what's going on around you, you still made it. In spite of the stuff that's happening to you, you have made it through, and you better learn to give God some praise about how good he's been to you. He said in this time, the first thing you have to recognize is this. Not long ago, we had a winter, and your electricity didn't work. You paid the bill, and yet somebody still was freezing up in that house. I don't know about you, but I love that time. Uh, oh, it was wonderful. Uh, electricity was out. It was cold outside. Uh, snow was everywhere. Folks were freezing to death. I grabbed my baby. I said, oh, yeah, it's all right right here. She said it was too cold to argue. It was no argument, no fussing, no fight. I held her. She held me. Uh, we got that sleeping bag and 15 blankets on top and we may do. See, every now and then, uh, you have to recognize, uh, stop complaining about your situation and thank God it's as good as it is. And Jeremiah was caught up in a situation. If you check it out, here's what it says. Jeremiah 1 and 3, it says, While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, uh, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. Uh, this is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Uh, the reality is uh, we have to learn to call on the Lord. Uh, the reality is uh, things will always get bad uh, and things will always get good. It's always about your perception of what's really going on. Let me put it to you this way. Jeremiah was a true man of God. And what Jeremiah did was tell folks the truth. Pastor Knowles, not everybody want to hear the truth. See, let me explain it to you this way. If preaching gets you in trouble, preaching going to get you out of trouble. Let's keep preaching. He, Jeremiah told the king uh, what was going to happen. Uh, the king said, oh, Jeremiah, why do you prophesy bad news? Uh, the reason the prophecy of bad news comes uh, so we can check ourselves and get ourselves in order. Amen. 
See, the Sunday school teacher this morning says you, 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 Jesus can be a stumbling block if you don't want to live right. <laughs> if you don't want to live right, he's going to move out the way and the devil going to come and put some stuff inside of you and around you and will mess you up. Uh, the first thing we have to recognize uh, in times of trouble, uh, we have to learn to call on the Lord. But here's the reality of it. <laughs> How can you hear without a... See, see, that's why they need you, Pastor. <laughs> see, because when folks get caught up in the world, they don't want to hear uh, what the preacher got to say. Uh, we were listening to the, what was that guy giving us all the news on uh, the COVID situation. Uh, we believe more in him uh, than we did the, the Lord. Uh, we believe more in the president that said drink some bleach uh, than we did uh, for the Lord. Uh, we start believing the sheriff and the deputy before we believe the Lord. Uh, the Lord said trust him try him taste him and see that he is good God said he's going to protect his people as long as we do what he's called us to do see Jeremiah recognized one thing he says when you get in this real walk don't count the folks because folk going to run away from you when you get real with God you're going to lose a whole lot of friends. You're going to lose a whole lot of associates. When you get real with God, you got some real power, and they're afraid of the power. They're afraid of the miracles because they have to recognize they have to get right. They have to live right in order to receive the blessings from God. That's why it brings us to the second phase. Jeremiah 33, 8 and 9 said it like this. He said, uh, I will cleanse them from all the sins they have committed against me and will forgive all their sin of rebellion against me. Then this city will bring me renown, joy, praise, and honor before all nations on earth that hear of all the good things I do for it. And they will be in awe and will tremble at the abundance, prosperity, and peace I provide for it. In other words, before restoration can take place, there has cleansing that happens inside of us. Uh, the reason the city fell in the first place, the reason Israel was in the shape that they were in, they took the focus off God. Man will tell you that it means something to have a lot of money. Man know how to lie, don't he? Young people will lose, use all their health trying to get some money. And when you get old, you spend all your money trying to get a little bit more health. Isn't that right, Sister Jackson? <laughs> because what happens is uh, we take our focus on the person or the spirit who provides everything for us uh, and we focus on the lies of men. Uh, God tells us uh, as long as we follow his decrees uh, he will bless us uh, he will not only bless us he'll bless us to the next generation uh, because of your goodness your kids are blessed uh, because of your goodness and your dedication your kids kids are blessed. Uh, he says I've never seen uh, the faithful of taken or their kids uh, begging uh, bread. Uh, as long as you do what you're supposed to do uh, God will take good care of you. He said but if you mess up they got this place right around the corner it's called TDC. See, see those around. Uh, see, good folks don't know what that means. But some of us got some relatives or got some ex friends. They just didn't want to act right. And because they didn't want to act right, what happens is it's not that the law was wrong. It's not like society was necessarily really wrong. Uh, it's because they were. 
disobedient, uh, they just couldn't fit in. Uh, and if you can't fit in the right place, uh, they got some other places for you to be. Uh, because when you can't follow the rules, they will put you in a unique situation. Israel had got so caught up that they forgot to serve a true and living God. They had got so caught up. I, don't, I know y'all around True Vine don't have this problem, but, but every now and then I see folks that get up in the world and, and all of a sudden, uh, they, when they were young, they used to praise God. Uh, they used to pray, now I lay me down. If you still praying, now I lay me, uh, and you 30, 40, or 50 years old, uh, you done missed some stuff. Uh, if you not in church in Sunday school uh, and have already read four lessons up, you done missed some stuff. Uh, if you're not taking care of the folks around you uh, and you're not living the life you don't miss some stuff uh, it's not about what you do uh, it's not about your education uh, it's not about what you have it's whom you serve uh, that is important Amen. see you may not believe that but let me break it down to you before big mama was she couldn't get an education uh, but God made a way yeah. big papa couldn't get an education but they the God they served right. made a way yeah. Yeah. before we had an education uh, we had God and as long as we had God uh, and they would get down on their knees God would unlock a door uh, and allow us to be where we are I don't know if you understand this but you check your own Google uh, you are less than 15% of the population and you have risen to a level that's so high that can't nobody stop you uh, God has been good to us uh, praise ye the Lord he said, the problem is they've turned away from God. The problem is because they've turned away from God, he says, I want to fix it. But before I can fix them, I got to bring them back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny to me that no matter how much God gives us, we're just not grateful. It's amazing to me. We can live where we want to live. So when I first came to Tyler, I, 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 God blessed me, and we had two or three dollars, and we went to move into Holly Tree. And when we got ready to move in Holly Tree, baby, what 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 did that lady tell us when we put that contract on that house? She came to us and said the neighbors tried to get together and, and, and do what? And say that one more time. The neighbors in Holly Tree decided to get together and buy the house so that we couldn't move in. We made an offer on the second house in the front yard. And before we got back to the office, they said there were multiple offers on the, on the property. When we got to the third time, they said, well, you know, it looks like there might be some problems. Now, we were already pre-approved, <laughs> so the money was there. But they said there might be some problems. Uh, and so what we decided to just hold for a minute. Uh, we got two or three more offers. Can you come up a little high? Huh? See, every now and then, even though God blesses us, uh, we forget the blessings. Uh, it's not our education. Uh, it's not who we are. It's the God that we serve. Amen. And then he's telling us he has to clean us, clean us up. See, the problem is not how much we get. Because now we can buy what we want to buy. We can drive what we want to drive. I know that because I, I saw some nice cars in y'all's parking lot. Ooh, y'all, y'all, y'all be blessed at this church. <laughs> I, I, y'all got some cars up there that I'm not used to. That y'all got some the, the new days. Y'all got some of that good cars out there. God has blessed. 
blessed us immensely. I look in the congregation. I see fur coats and meat coats. I see Gucci and Louis Vuittons. I see shoes that, that look like they, 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 they not plastic now. I'm just trying to tell you. They didn't come from Walmart. I see some skins of some animals around. God has blessed us immensely. But yet, in the epidemic, where were the people? In a time of crisis when we should have come together and lifted up the name of God and praised him for taking good care of us, what happened? Here's what I found out. It's not how much God keeps giving us because the more he gives us, the more we want more and more and more. If you win the lotto and get a million dollars, you'll spend that million and say, Lord, if you give me four million next time, I'll be a better student. Then you get the four million, you waste that. Let me explain how you waste it. Uh, because you start with four, they tell you get four, but you don't get no four now. I'm just going to tell it like it is. Uh, you start with four, but they're going to take half off because you want your cash right now. Then the government said, well, you know, you crossed that number on another 25% or 33% before you get it. So you start with four, half disappear, you got two. Out the two, you got only two you got. So now you stuck with one point something. Well, you know you promised mama them some and you promised your kids some and everybody in the neighborhood know that you got some and the preacher at the church is all looking funny. He start getting real nice to you and the deacon start smiling that you know the Lord required one kid and before you look up, it's gone and you just don't know what happened because God has blessed us on jobs. God has blessed us in relationships. Relationships. God has blessed us in materialistic wealth. God has blessed us. But here's the problem. The reality is this. We don't praise God for the good stuff. We don't start praising God so we start losing some stuff. Sister Jackson, I know you know a little bit about this. <laughs> Folks, when they're doing good, uh, they don't have time to make those appointments. They try to reschedule, mess up your schedule. But when they start getting bad, uh, when you start having aches and pains, uh, they call you up. Can you fit me in? Uh, they call you up. Uh, it's not the good times. Uh, when you can't get out of bed, you start saying, Lord, I need you right now. So you start calling the name of the Lord. Uh, when you start losing a little bit of that health. Uh, you start calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, when the plant starts shutting down, you start calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, when your kids start acting crazy, you start calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, when you got problems with your boo, you start, Lord, you know this man you gave me. I don't know where he came from, but Lord, I need you right. He ain't listening to nothing I'm telling him, and he ain't acting right. And he in the other room said, Lord, this woman you gave me, I, I need you right now. See, when you start losing stuff, when you can't get out of bed, huh? when that rheumatism start hitting you, huh? when your back don't move like it used to move, huh? when those pains start hitting you, huh? you can't get in a suit and you start, I know y'all not there, just keep living. Huh? You can't get in those fancy clothes and you just got to start going to Walmart and buying warm-ups. You don't care what it costs. you buying the cheapest stuff that has elastic because last year stuff don't fit no more and you want to expand out as much as you can we start calling on the name of the Lord when we lose the blessings of the Lord. And then our prayers, we don't get deep. We don't have those long prayers deep. We got them short prayers. Lord, I need you. If you could just get me back where I used to be, I praise you. That's what happened to Israel. God says, before I can fix you, uh, you have to be humbled. Uh, before I can fix you, you have to want to be fixed. Uh, before I can fix you, you got to go back to the nitty gritty. Before I can fix you, uh, the storms have to come inside and you start thanking me for things being as good as they are. Once you start thanking me, then things will start to get better. Well, how do we start thanking God? Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Put God back first.
first. God don't care about the stuff we care about. God don't care about the stuff we care about. Let me explain to you. God don't care about your job. And why should you? Because here's how, uh, if you're faithful to God, before you came to that job, uh, you needed a job, didn't you? And when you get tired of that job, you're going to quit that job. Uh, and when they get tired of you, they're going to quit you. Uh, don't worry about the job, uh, but you learn to be obedient to God while you're on that job. Uh, you're supposed to be faithful. You're supposed to work hard. Uh, you're supposed to be the light when other people are focusing on darkness. You're not the one stirring up mess. You're not the one creating havoc. Uh, you're not the one carrying on gossip. Uh, when folks come to you with gossip, you ask the question uh, brother or sister can we pray for them right now uh, and you be the light uh, so that those in that place uh, will start to receiving uh, the power of Jesus Christ when your kids act crazy and they all do the reason I know they did do because we did and as soon as we turn the corner we did what mom and daddy told us not to do and then we just, and let me be honest with you, all of us are guilty of something. Uh, we just didn't get caught. We were better at it uh, than some of the other ones uh, because God was watching out for us. Uh, he knew where we would be later on, so he protected us. Amen. We have to give God the praise. We seek him. We learn to be humble. Uh, and we let go and let God. Amen. Then he comes back and the last thing he says is 10 and 11. This is what the Lord says. You say about this place, it is a desolate waste without people or animals. Yet in the towns of Judea and the streets of Jerusalem that are deserted, inhabited by neither people nor animals, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring thank offerings uh, to the house of the Lord saying uh, give thanks to the Lord Almighty for the Lord is good uh, his love endures forever for I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before says the Lord in other words uh, once we start learning uh, how to be grateful for what God has done to us and done for us, uh, we will start walking in a new type of blessing. Uh, see, I should have been dead at 15. Uh, so now every day I wake up, I'm thankful. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I know my wife is saved. I know my children are saved. Uh, so if God takes me out tomorrow, I'm okay with it. Uh, I don't worry about this stuff uh, because I know where I'm going and it's a much better place. Uh, God is telling us uh, sometimes we gotta shut up and stop complaining. All right, all right. Turn around and say, Well, you know, my back is hurting. Thank God I can move. Thank God I got a good mind. Thank God that God has been with me. You know, that woman I got is crazy. Yeah, you crazy too. It's something wrong with you. Thank God. You got somebody to share your life with. You better wake up. It's better to have somebody because one of these days you don't know if you're going to end up in a wheelchair and need somebody to push that. You better start learning to be nice to that person right now because the last thing you want is somebody all the bitter have to take care of you. That's why he's telling us uh, learn to love ye one another. In one another lift up one another learn to be appreciative of how good God has been to you once we start recognizing the goodness of God once we recognize the blessings of God once we recognize the gifts of God every day we wake up is a good day every day we walk around we see God's goodness because let me tell it to you when you see somebody on the street it could be you when we went over to Europe I think we were in Rome and as we were sitting at a restaurant in Rome we looked up in our tour guide and I saw this man waiting for us to leave to eat 
our scraps. <laughs> uh, asked him who he was because he didn't look like a regular, uh, uh, a regular beggar. He had dignity about him. Uh, his suit was well made. It looked like it was tailored. Uh, his shoes were well made. Uh, he had wingtips. Uh, everything about him looked like success. Uh, but he was waiting to eat the scraps off of the table. I turned to him. I said, sir, what is your story? He said, I used to be president of a college. And the country went broke. When the country went broke, my retirement was wiped out. The next thing that wiped out the uh, part that I had saved up, I got a little medical issue. And the rest of my money was gone. I have a little trinkets of what was left behind, but I don't have enough to take care of me and my wife. So I make sure she gets what she needs, and I come up here. Because I notice y'all waste all your food. Y'all eat just a little bit and just turn your nose up at it. And I'm thankful that I can get your scraps so that I can live on. And prepare and take care of me and my family. It could happen to you. We're in a country that's almost broke. They lying saying they don't, they're they not broke, but they, they almost broke. The reason I know they're almost broke is because they told you to stop and wait to file your income tax. Because we got to figure out the money to give you back because we didn't already spend it sending this somewhere else. <laughs> When they robbing Peter to pay Paul, they almost broke. When they misuse your retirement money to fund military actions, uh, yeah, they almost broke. But I know somebody who's never broke. Uh, the God that we serve uh, says, I take good care of you. Amen. All we have to do. He says, even though you look at this rubble, even though you look at desperation, even though you look at the savage situation, God says, I will restore. <laughs> even though you don't see it now, just read around in a little while. He says, I'm pruning some stuff. I'm trying to get it right. See, see, see it's what God does. He does pruning session uh, and his pruning gets rid of stuff that creates havoc in the atmosphere when his people learn to come together in unity and start praying together learning to love ye one another there's a new power that takes place in the atmosphere uh, God sends his power and all of a sudden uh, people start coming back uh, see everybody wa wants love stories uh, because they always have happy endings uh, and when you serve Jesus Christ that is the best love story there is uh, he says when two or three are gathered in my name uh, he be there. Amen. Amen. As you look at your situation, praise God. Because in this place is a sweet spirit. In this place is a unification of God's power. In this place is, is a group of people that will transcend uh, the city of Tyler. In this place is it, 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 it is, is something that you may not be able to see. It's a hope of glory. It's a hope of saying, oh, well, how did y'all do that? That's when you turn around and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we never would have made it. He's telling Jeremiah, don't worry about how it looks. <laughs> you just keep being faithful. Huh? Don't worry about who's there and who's not there. You just keep being faithful. Don't worry uh, about if you don't see it now or not. Uh, you just keep being uh, faithful uh, and do season. Uh, God will magnify it. Uh, God will bless you. Uh, God will hold you. Uh, God will keep you. Uh, and when it's all said and done, it's all done for the glory of God. God gets the glory. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but those who hope in the Lord 
will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Get up every morning and start thanking God that you woke up. It wasn't that alarm clock that woke you up. And if so, go take it to the cemetery and let it go off and see how many folk get up out of there. It's the God that you serve Amen. Amen. woke you up. Start thanking him for all the little things. Lord, you woke me up this morning. Thank you. Lord, I got something to eat. I might not like it. It may not taste good because the doctor tell me I can't eat this and I can't. Praise ye the Lord that I can still eat some because some folks got to take food through an injection. Praise God for every little thing. Stop complaining. Start loving. Start encouraging. And give God all the glory. Because he said he came so that we would have life and have it more abundantly. He died so we can have joy. He died so we can enjoy the lives that we're living. He died so that we could learn more about him and his grace. He died so that we would have a chance to live. He died for us, and we need to learn to live for him. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for your wisdom. Help us, Father, to stop being so critical of everything. Help us, Lord, to learn to appreciate the people in our lives. And, Lord, most of all, help us to learn to be gracious. Help us to try to live a sinless life, try to be more like you, and stop focusing on the stuff of this world. Help us, Father, to encourage, to love, and forgive. We thank you for everything and all things. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Um, we want to thank Pastor George uh, for that beautiful.